Hi everyone, welcome to the Frugal Kitchen. Today I'm making raisin pie and the, I didn't know raisin pie existed, but I was looking on Pinterest for something to do with a whole bunch of raisins that I had that I hadn't used in a while and I was afraid we're going to go stale. And this was one of the recipes I saw that really interested me because I don't make enough pies and I wanted to try it. So I was planning on doing my oatmeal crust that I had done for the sugar-free chocolate pie. But this crust that um, was linked in the cookies, cakes, pies, oh my, .wordpress.com recipe um, had a different kind of pie. Um, basically, the crust for this was two layers. So um, I followed their recipe with the exception of replacing one of the cups of flour with oat flour. You probably can very easily do this with entirely oat flour. I don't think it would make that much of a difference. So um, I started with one cup of oat flour and one cup of wheat flour, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of sucralose. Obviously the original recipe is not sugar free and it says to use sugar, but um, for me a crust doesn't need to be sweet, so I'm not gonna use sucralose. Um, and by the way, this is actually mostly maltodextrin. It's um, just generic Splenda which is mostly maltodextrin and some sucralose. So I'm mixing it by hand a bit right here. It does say to add two thirds cup of shortening, which I don't normally have on hand. I typically only buy that when I make snickerdoodles. So instead of shortening, I used butter and two thirds cups was uh, 10 tablespoons. So that's what's happening there. Um, it's, it's not butter also, it's a uh, vegan margarine. This recipe is vegan and one benefit to using margarine, even if you're not vegan, is that um, it smushes easier. Uh, as you can see, I'm using my hands to crumble the margarine into the dough to um, make the crust. It should be kind of like a moist ball. When all is said and done, that's kind of what it looks like. It, it took a really long time. And um, I used only my right hand, which I try to do when I'm cooking with my hands because I don't want one hand to be, oh, both hands to be dirty. And my tri, is that a tricep? What is that part of your arm? Anyway, that part of my arm got super bulky and big. And honestly, it's still kind of, still kind of sexy looking. Um, the recipe also says to add six tablespoons of ice water. And that is the pitcher that I keep in my refrigerator. Um, I did not add six tablespoons. I started off a couple, I would, I did it two at a time, um, which I believe the recipe does say to do, and then mixed it by hand to check the consistency. And it kind of got a bit wetter than I would like before I got to six tablespoons. So again, I'm using just the one hand to keep my left hand free in case I need to answer the phone, unlock the door pick up a ferret and, you know, put them on the litter box, things like that. If you're cooking and you like me and you find it easier to use your hands for some tasks, then make sure that you don't use both your hands or you will run into a problem. This is only my second time ever making a pie crust from scratch. I typically buy the frozen crusts at the store. Um, this recipe does ask you to do um, a nine inch deep pie crust. Uh, I don't have a pan that would work for that. The pan that I used might work for that, but I was afraid I didn't have enough dough for that. Um, part of that was because of the fact that I didn't roll the dough out like I should have. So um, this is a cake pan. I don't even know if it's nine inches. I only have the one and I sprayed it with canola oil and I put the dough in here just the way I made that other pie crust, which was, this was how the that dough was supposed to be made. This particular recipe does tell you to roll it out and I was like whatever this is fine but I think if I rolled it out between two pieces of parchment paper it would have been a lot thinner and maybe gone up the sides a bit like it should have so I'm a little dissatisfied with myself on not doing it that way so I just kind of smashed it in and it's it does get a little bit uneven like the crust is not the same height all the way around even in the center of the pan. So um, that's something to think about. And it does say to separate them and like roll out two, two kind of balls and flatten them. Um, 
it actually says to divide the dough in half, two pieces, um, wrap it in plastic and flatten it into kind of a disc shape, which is sort of what I did in the bowl there, and then refrigerate for two hours. Um, I did not cover mine in plastic, so I found that it was fine, but I also only used four tablespoons of water instead of the six, and that was because I kind of thought it was getting a little too wet, and when it's too wet, you can't um, control it very easily. That could be a factor of the oat flour that I use as well. Perhaps the wheat flour doesn't do that. So that dough recipe was also from cookies, cakes, pies, oh my, dot wordpress.com. Um, this recipe I divided in half. Uh, it does call for four cups of raisins and then four cups of water. I didn't think I had quite that many. I'm guessing a full container of those is four cups. So I just did two cups and uh, two cups of water, two cups of raisins. Another reason I decided to do that was because I didn't have dough on the sides of my pan and I didn't want there to be a whole bunch of like stuck on raisins on the side where the metal was. And I, I felt like if there was this big gap of no dough, it wouldn't be a very good shape for the pie when I cut it. So um, on medium low heat, let the raisins soak in that water. Um, once they start boiling, turn a timer on to watch them boil for five minutes and then you can stop and add these ingredients. We will be adding some brown sugar. It calls for half a cup for my ratios. So I did a quarter cup real sugar, a quarter cup um, maltodextrin, Splenda, sucralose stuff. And um, I have discovered that when making brown sugar from scratch, a teaspoon of molasses to one quarter cup of sugar is the best ratio for, um, I don't think it matters if it's, if it's light or brown. Um, it just, it's kind of a medium, it's right between light and brown sugar. So I'm mixing that with my hand, again, the old trick. Um, this also I find a lot more evenly distributes the molasses compared to using a spoon. The spoon tends to kind of just let everything clump on it and your fingers don't. So I'm turning the brown sugar and brown sugar sucralose or whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm turning it into brown sugar right before our eyes. So you'll add that and five tablespoons of cornstarch for the original recipe. That would be two and a half tablespoons for mine. And half a tablespoon is, well, a tablespoon is three teaspoons. So I could have done one and a half teaspoons, but I was being lazy and decided it didn't matter how much cornstarch was in there. So I did half of that spoon there for the last one. Uh, cinnamon, we're going to add half a teaspoon. The cornstarch is very important. I will say do not omit that. I know I like to do a lot of substitutions, but that will uh, coagulate, if that's the right phrase, the filling. And then for the salt, I did a quarter teaspoon. Mix all the dry ingredients together. Add the brown sugar to the dry ingredients. I guess that counts as a dry ingredient and then mix that pretty well too. And then you'll add that to the skillet with the uh, raisins and water and that will boil. And once that kind of gets um, gelatinous, then you're good to move on. So at this point when I was making this, the water started to boil and I set a timer for five minutes. And then I uh, looked at the timer, which is the same exact device, and saw that there were 37 minutes left on the refrigerated stuff. Once the five minutes are up, add the dry ingredients that you'd mixed earlier into the skillet and then stir pretty well. The recipe says to cook and stir until thick and syrup is clear. And even while making this, I wasn't sure what they meant by clear, unless it means it goes from this color here to the lighter, more translucent color. Um, that obviously is what it is because it definitely does not get clear. It's not like it gets to be light corn syrup colored. It, I would say it's, well, maybe it is light corn syrup colored. It's kind of dark corn syrup colored, in my opinion. It's 
it looks like the inside of pecan pie. Um, so now I'm going to add a teaspoon of lemon juice and then one and a, oh, they didn't add the butter yet, one uh, half teaspoon of vanilla. And it should be one and a half teaspoons of margarine. Recipe says butter. And um, I just threw in two tablespoons because, meh, you know, I figured an extra half tablespoon wasn't going to hurt anything. And I also really hate having, like, weird weird quantities of things. If, if, if butter and, and margarine come in tablespoon marked quantities, don't ask me to put half of one of those in my recipe. I will not do it. It does not affect th things that much. So stir well until the margarine slash butter melts. Anytime you hear me say butter, it, most likely I've used vegan margarine. If you're enjoying this recipe so far, and I know I am, please like, share, and subscribe so we can reach many more viewers who are interested in healthier cooking. So I uh, let the raisins kind of fall off the spoon so you can see kind of how goopy it is. And I'm now showing off my shrimp scampi because I had some leftovers and was eating this while I was making this while I was supposed to be eating dinner. And uh, if you haven't seen my shrimp scampi recipe and you're not a vegan, then please check it out. It's really freaking delicious. I don't even know how it's this good. So there's like 17 minutes left on the refrigerator stuff for the dough, but I decided to screw it and just start filling it. The dough was firm and fairly dry, and um, I don't think I added too much water, and I don't think I added too little water either. So I'm spooning all of the raisin gelatinous stuff into the cake pan for the pie. I mentioned earlier that the gelatinous filling kind of reminds me of pecan pie filling. And um, now you tell me, is that, that looks like dark corn syrup, right? So it definitely doesn't get clear. I don't know what the clear thing was about. Anyway, forget that. This is perfect. This is a perfect recipe. So um, I decided since my pecan pie recipe, and I do say it pecan because I'm from Louisiana and that's how we say it there. Since that involves uh, Cairo syrup or corn syrup, um, which has a hell of a lot of sugar and I'm trying to avoid sugar, I'm going to make this recipe minus the raisins and use that next time I am making pecan pie, which I'm hopefully going to do in December. So that's what looks like spread it out nice and evenly. And now we're going to roll the top of the pie dough. I have never made like my own pie dough before besides the other recipe when I made it out of oat flour. I usually just buy the frozen nine inch things from the grocery store and those have a lot of carbs and sugar so I find it better for me to avoid that and it's not hard to make the pie crust now that I'm like really thinking about it so I should definitely do it more often and I was a little worried about making the top part I was like what the hell top like I've never made a pie that had a top to it that's just not the kind of pies I make and honestly this doesn't need a top either you probably if you cover the pan or the, the you know the pie thing with foil I don't think you would need to worry about a top so I don't have a very even you know thing here it's maybe if I had a spare um, cake pan I could have used that to measure how much I actually needed the dough to cover so it didn't cover the whole thing but that's okay it did um, roll out very easily it was easy to manipulate um, I know sometimes low gluten you know, flour or flourless dough, which this one's not flourless, but it's almost flourless. They don't, um, they are not as immalleable. So the recipe says to put it in the oven at 425 for 30 to 35 minutes. I did like 16 minutes the first time around. Didn't look like anything happened, so I'm doing another 15 minutes. I think I turned it halfway as well, just to be on the safe side. And that's what it looked like when it was done. But I said, no, it's not done yet. Let's try three more minutes because that's kind of how I typically make things and it looks it looks pretty brown now right so the pan's still slightly hot but i'm gonna let you take a look at it i did poke holes with a fork um, because the recipe says to do that to let the dough air out however since there's so many um, unsealed edges along the rim of the pan i don't think it was actually necessary for this but the the visual of it is very good and i do like having the top i think 
it just adds a little bit extra crunchiness to it. It's a very, even with the lack of much sugar, a pretty sweet recipe, at least I find, but my sweet tooth is uh, adjusted to less sweets. So um, it cut very well, um, but you've got to use a real knife and not a, my pie, pie server doesn't have very good teeth on it. And it holds its shape very well too. That's one thing that I liked about having the cornstarch in the recipe is that it holds its shape. It's um, coagulated or goopy or whatever. And um, the raisins, I mean, part of the reason you added the water too was A for the um, cornstarch and B because the raisins puff up a little bit. They're not all dry and wrinkly. So it's almost like eating something that's halfway between a grape and a raisin because it's got some volume to it. And it was a really good recipe. Um, my husband also enjoyed it. Um, I enjoyed it. I'm still eating it. And I think you'll enjoy it too. So please check it out if you like these ingredients. And happy eating, everyone.